In Affinity Designer and Publisher, there are a variety of viewing choices available, which let you preview your designs before exporting and make mode comparisons live on your workspace. You can find these viewing choices by opening the View menu and then View Modes. At the top of the list are View Modes and Options, and towards the bottom, we have a choice between Single View and Split View. Single View will display the entire workspace in that view mode, but if I choose the Split Mode, a line will appear on the document view. I can quickly toggle in and out of split view mode with the comma keyboard shortcut. Currently, on the left side I have the vector view mode enabled, as we can see on the label, and on the right I have the pixel view mode. I can click drag to move this line across the document and compare the two view modes. By default, the document is in the vector view mode. Objects and applied effects will be shown with smooth clean edges and transitions. Alternatively, you can choose to display the workspace as pixels. In this mode, vector objects are presented as if they're constructed from individual pixels. This is an accurate representation of how the design will appear if it is exported to a raster format like JPEG. I can swap the left or right preview for a different view mode. The black divider label indicates which side will be changed, and I can click the left or right label to select it or I could also click the areas to the left or right of the dividing line. Let's try a different view mode. I'll go back to the view menu and open the view mode menu. This time, I'll try the retina pixel view mode. This is similar to the pixel mode, but in this case, it represents how your design will be displayed on a retina or high DPI display. There are also two wireframe modes, the X-ray and the outline modes. The outline mode will hide all the strokes and fills in your design and only display the vector paths. Selection behaviours will change, so grouped objects can be selected immediately, like ungrouped objects. This is great for making the finest adjustments to curves and nodes throughout your layer stack because all the curves are exposed. However, in very complex designs, it can be difficult to know if you're selecting the right curves. I'll go back to the View Modes menu and select the alternative wireframe mode, X-Ray. This displays the object's fill at a reduced opacity. This can help give a point of reference when selecting and editing curves and nodes. View Mode options can be used in conjunction with other view modes and combined with each other. I'll change the right side to the Vector View Mode and enable the Hairline option. Hairline can be toggled on or off whilst keeping in the current view mode. When hairline is enabled, all line weights are ignored, so all lines are displayed as thin lines regardless of zoom level. This is particularly useful for CAD documents, as the hairline mode displays the design as they would be displayed in CAD apps. Another option that you can toggle on or off is grayscale. Grayscale can be useful for evaluating contrasts and dynamic range in your design. You can also choose to hide or view layer effects. I'll disable the grayscale option and then go back to the menu to enable hide effects. This design contains a lot of layers and if we look on the layers panel, we can see that many of them have layer effects applied. Using a view mode option that hides layer effects can greatly improve performance as you work. The final option in the view mode menu is clip to canvas. This restricts the document view, so you can only see objects that are placed on the page. If objects extend beyond the page, the part of the object outside of the page is hidden, and objects that are entirely off the page are also hidden. When disabled, all objects are visible, regardless of where they're placed. You can quickly toggle this setting on or off with the backstroke keyboard shortcut. If you find yourself toggling between different view modes often, you can save time by adding them to your toolbar. By default, Pixel, Retina Pixel and Wireframe are already there, but you can add more by going to View and Customize Toolbar. Now I can scroll down and find the advanced view modes. These contain the Pixel, Retina Pixel and Wireframe buttons that we already have, plus the Hairline option. So I'll drag it onto the toolbar and then remove the view modes that were already there by dragging them over the document view and releasing the mouse button. I can also drag out the grayscale option and hide effects option and then click done. Now I can quickly toggle between view modes 
and enable multiple view options. So that was a look at the different view modes and options available in Affinity Designer and Publisher. Thanks for watching.